Hey guys, welcome to the review or the overview for quiz one. Um, in this segment, I'm going to go over some of the important concepts that will be seen for the quiz one. Uh, let's start with the first problem. It says, uh, given, or I'm sorry, change the given equation in vertex form, into vertex form. So we're actually given the standard form. Now, in order for us to change into vertex form, we're going to apply the first two steps for graphing in standard form. Uh, step one would be to find the AOS or my axis of symmetry and step two is to find my vertex. Once we have the vertex we can go ahead and switch into vertex form. So let's go ahead and see what those steps look like. So step one is to find our axis of symmetry. Now our axis of symmetry is given by the equation x is equal to negative b over 2a. We're going to go ahead and plug in our values. Now we look at our standard form we know that a is equal to 4, b is equal to negative 2, and c is equal to 1. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. x is equal to negative, my b value is negative 2, over 2 times 4. Um, if we multiply across on the top, we got a negative times a negative. That gives us a positive, and then 2 times 4 is 8. We simplify, we get 1 4. So my axis of symmetry is that x is equal to 1 over 4. Now for my step 2 I'm going to go ahead and find my vertex. So I know that this is my axis of symmetry. All I have to do is find my y value or plug that directly into my original function or my original equation. So I'm going to write y is equal to 4 times 1 fourth squared minus Fix that. Minus uh, 2 times 1 fourth plus 1. At this point, we're going to go ahead and do our exponents rule. When we have a fraction, we have to square the numerator, square the denominator. So we get 4 times 1 over 16 minus 2 times 1 over 4 plus 1. Now if we multiply across we get 4 over 16 minus 2 over 4 plus 4 over 4. Now this 1 I turn into a fraction and I just multiply to get the common denominator I multiply the denominator by 4 and the numerator by 4. If we simplify the first term we get 1 over 4 because 4 divides into my numerator once and 4 divides into my denominator 4 times. So this gives us 1 fourth minus 2 over 4 plus 4 over 4. Now we can go ahead and just add and subtract across the board. So I'm going to move this a little bit over here. We get, let me just rewrite it. Okay, so at this point, if all of our denominators are the same, really the only thing we're saying is if my denominator is the same, my numerator is the only thing we're going to add or subtract. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, plus 4 is 3. So we get 3 over 4. So we have a y value and an x value. Together we get our vertex. So we have 1 fourth and or comma 3 over 4. Um, let me fix that 4. Okay. So alongside with, since we know what a is anyways, so we have a is equal to 4, we're going to use our vertex notation or our, our equation for vertex or general form for vertex, which is a times a quantity of x minus h squared plus k, and we're going to plug in our values directly. This is our h value, this is our k value, this is our a value. So we get y is equal to 4 times the quantity of x minus 1 4 squared plus 3 over 4. And this is our vertex form. If we graph our standard form and this vertex form, we'll see that they are the exact same parabola. So we're going to move on to the next example. Now for this example, 
we're pretty much doing the same thing except we're going step by step by step. So we're given the standard form of y is equal to 2x squared plus 20x plus 47, and we're asked to find the AOS or our axis of symmetry. So once again, we're going to apply our formula, x is equal to uh, negative b over 2a. Uh, our a value is going to be 2, our b value is 20, and our c value is 47. So let's go ahead and work this out. We get x is equal to negative, well, my b value is 20, over 2, my a value is 2. If we simplify this, we get negative 20 over 4, which is just negative 5. So my axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 5. Now, in order for me, for the second part, it says to find the vertex. In order for me to find the vertex, I'm going to, again, once again, plug in this x value directly into my standard function or my standard equation and get a y value. If I have an x and a y value, then I'll have my vertex. So we're going to go ahead and plug in direct. We hit y is equal to 2 times the quantity of negative 5 squared plus 20 times 5 or negative 5 uh, plus 47. We do what's in parentheses first. We get 2 times the quantity of 25 plus uh, 20 times negative 5 gives me negative 100 plus 47. I'm going to simplify things. So I get 2 times 25 is just 50 minus 100 plus 47. Let me carry this work up here. So then we get 50 minus 100 is going to be negative 50 plus 47. We end up with y is equal to negative 3. So my vertex then at this, at this point would be negative 5, negative 3. Since I have my, oh, okay, that would be my vertex. So those are the coordinates for my vertex. Now it's just to write a, an equation for a function that has been translated four units to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and actually write this equation, my standard equation, into vertex form. Vertex form is useful because it allows us to shift quantity is very easy. We can shift our h value, we can shift our k value. So if we have y is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k, we can shift our h value any way, which way we want, and our k value, same thing. Um, so let's go ahead and figure out what our, what our vertex form of this standard equation is. I'm going to plug in my values. We know that a is 2, so we're going to plug in 2 times the quantity of x, my h value is negative, so if we go negative times a negative, this becomes positive, 5 squared, and my k is negative 3. So if my h value is negative 5, and I'm translating 4 units to the right, I'm going to be adding 4, I end up with negative 1. So all I'm doing is switching out my h value to this negative 1, because that means my entire graph shifted 4 units to the right. So my new equation, my new equation would be y is equal to 2 times the quantity of x, the negative times the negative, is plus 1 squared minus 3. So this guarantees that our entire parabola shifted 4 units to the right. Now let's do that one more time for a translation of five units down. So we know that k is my, my um, vertical shift. So from my original equation, we have that k is negative 3. So if I'm translating it five units down, I'm actually adding a negative 5. So I'm going down. So negative 3 plus negative 5 gives me negative 8. Now I'm going to just rewrite my entire function again. We get y is equal to 2 times the quantity. We're using our original h plus 5 squared minus our 8. And that's the, the, what we would obtain. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and move into the maximization problem. So when we're trying to maximize area, um, there's a few steps we got to go through. So it says a farmer has 300 feet of fence with which he wants to enclose a rectangular space using an existing fence for one side as shown below. 
So this is the picture of what we want to enclose. Uh, write a quadratic equation to represent possible area the fence could contain. So we know that area for a rectangle is just length times width. But up here, we're given the value of 300, which means 300 is actually our perimeter. We need to get a function or an equation for the perimeter of our picture here. So I'm going to write that equation or that function down. We have that perimeter is equal to, we know that it sums up all of the sides. So if I go clockwise around, we get width plus length plus width. If we simplify that, we get 2w, which is 2 times the width plus 1 length. Now we know that it's 300 feet, or my perimeter is 300 feet, so we get 300 is equal to 2w plus l. Now if we're using this parameter, or this perimeter equation, let's go ahead and see if we can substitute one of these values in for area. So the easiest one to solve for would be length. Now if I want to solve for length, I'm going to subtract 2w from both sides. I subtract 2w. We know that this goes away, and I'm left with 300 minus 2w is equal to l. Now I have this equation in terms of length. I can use this equation in terms of length to substitute in for this length in my area. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I get a is equal to the quantity because now my length is this. We get 300 minus 2w. And then don't forget that we're going to multiply by w outside the parentheses. So if I want to get a quadratic equation, or a, yeah, a quadratic equation, which is what we want here, I'm going to distribute my w inside my parentheses. So we get area is equal to 300 minus 2w squared. Now if you want to write your higher ordered uh, exponent in front, all we have to do then is just kind of shift the numbers around. This has a negative with it, so it becomes area is equal to negative 2 w squared plus 300 and that is the quadratic function for area so what we're saying is this will maximize if we graph this it gives us a parabola that looks something like this I mean at the top point we're gonna find our maximum value um, at this point since this is our width the most the largest amount of fence that we have is 300 so this is going to be 300, and our area is going to be 0 at that point. So for B, it says find the dimensions that give you the greatest area. That means we want to find the maximum. Well, another word for maximum is vertex. So we're going to go ahead and find the vertex of this function. Now we're going to find the axis of symmetry in terms for W. So instead of writing X, we're going to write W is equal to negative B over 2A. We're going to substitute those values in. I know from my top um, area model here that my B value is going to be 300. I'm sorry, there's a typo here. I forgot to put the W. There you go. And my C value, well, there's no C value. My A value is going to be negative 2. So negative 2, 300. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug those values in. So I get W, or my width, is just equal to negative 300 over 2 times negative 2. So we end up getting 300 divided by negative 4. Now, if we simplify that out, uh, you can either do it the long way, or if you're really good at math, you can do it in your head. Uh, but what we end up getting is 75. So we're saying that our width is 75 feet uh, long. So if we found our W, this is literally our axis of symmetry. So now we need to find uh, what, oh, we can actually find our area, what our area is by substituting back into our original function. So I'm going to find out what my area is. My area then becomes negative 2, 75 squared plus 300 times 75. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify some of these out, some of these values out. So we get 75 squared, we get negative 2 
I'm sure I'm gonna just do this whole value by myself. 75 squared times two gives us. Let me erase that. 75 squared uh, times negative 2 will give us negative 11,250 plus uh, 300 times 75 will give us 22,500. Um, if we work that out, we're just subtracting. It just becomes a subtraction problem. We end up getting 11... 1250 feet squared so that would be my area now if I want to find out what my length is all I have to do is substitute into or actually use the the equation for area area is equal to length times width except I know my area now so let me just kind of erase this my area becomes uh, 11,250 is equal to my width or my length and my width is going to be 75 so if I want to find out what L is I just divide both sides by 75 if I divide by 75 I end up with 150 so my length is 150 so all of my values then if I were to sum this up my width is 75 my length is 150 feet don't forget the feet and my area is 11,250 feet squared. And it makes sense because if my length here was 150 feet and each side here was 75 feet, I get a total of 300 uh, feet for my, parameter, for my perimeter. So that's how you would tackle this problem. Uh, let's look at one final one, just kind of a recapping how we would write an equation of a given graph. So here we have this equation. We know something very valuable to us is our vertex. So I know that my vertex is at 0.5, negative 20.25. So if I know my vertex, I'm going to go ahead and write an equation in vertex form. I know y is equal to, I don't know what my value of a is yet, x minus 0.5 squared minus 20.25 so I'm gonna pick a value so I can figure out what a is I'm gonna pick an x and y coordinate point straight from my graph so a very nice one is this one right there so that point there is actually 0 negative 20 so if I pick 0 negative 20 my x value is 0 and my y value is negative 20 so I'm gonna go ahead and plug those values in I get negative 20 is equal to a times x is 0, awesome, minus 0.5 squared, minus 20.25. Now I'm going to do what's in parentheses first. If I do what's in parentheses first, I get 0 minus 0.5, which is just negative 0.5, and negative 0.5 squared is a times 0.25 minus 20.25. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for A. I add 20 to both sides, or 20.25. I add 20.25 to both sides. Um, this goes away. This is the negative. So I end up really with just 0.25 is equal to A times 0.25. I divide both sides by 0.25. This goes away. I end up with an A value of 1. So I know that my A value is going to be 1. Now, if I have my a value and I have my vertex, I can go ahead and just write this function out. I get y is equal to 1 for my a, and I get x minus 0.5 squared, oops, minus 20.25. And that's how you would go about that. If you want to simplify this, you should turn this into standard form. You just um, multiply the binomials as it's squared. So you would expand this binomial and then subtract by 20. If you do 20.25, if you would do so, you would get y is equal to 
believe it's x squared um, minus, so we would go minus 1, minus 1x, um, plus 0.25 minus 20.25. So the 0.25s cancel out, and you're really just left with x squared minus x minus 20. So this would be in standard form. This would be in vertex form. And that's how you can write an equation. So this covers kind of the most important concepts you'll end up seeing for your quiz. Remember, you can pause and rewind and take notes um, as you please or within your own timing. I hope this helps, guys, and good luck.